Preview. Greetings, dear W124 friends, fans and owners. It's Ivica speaking. At the very beginning, I would like kindly to ask you to subscribe to the channel. Our today's topic is going to be uh, the KE Jetronic system itself. This video is predicted for all CISE equipped Mercedes owners or those that intend to buy one like this, who want to learn how to diagnose malfunctions on this system and to repair themselves malfunctions or together with the mechanic. Remember, in order to get to the fuel injection system, you must make sure before that that five things are good functioning. The spark plugs, the distributor, the rotor, the ignition coil and the cables. And you must make sure that you have no vacuum leaks. In this video I'm going to be talking about the system and to try to demystify the, it entirely. So let's begin. Something about uh, the history of the, this system in brief. The CIS, the Continuous Injection System, was presented in 1973 and, and was being mounted in the cars until 1993. The CISE was presented in uh, 82 and it was the peak of this fuel injection system development. And in comparison to the regular CIS, it has some additional electric uh, parts in order to achieve better uh, engine running, lower consumption, more engine power and better acceleration. This is, however, a mechanical injection, so that uh, its mechanical parts must be fully functional in order for the system to operate properly. Why is this injection type good? In contrast to mo modern uh, fuel injection systems, CIS can fully be repaired in garage using common tools and for its fine-tuning, you will be needing uh, three things. A pressure gauge, a multimeter and a duty cycle capable multimeter. The one that, ca uh, that is capable of measuring percents. In contrast to modern uh, injections, that must be connected to diagnostics. The second thing is that even if the car ECU fails, you can continue the journey uh, with just a higher consumption. The th thing that even the contemporary fuel, fuel injection systems are not capable of. On the other hand, when you have a CISE issue, you will have to check at least three or four things in order to solve the issue. While the modern fuel injection shows the exact code, and you know what it is about. Well, how does the CISE function then? The fuel pump sucks the fuel out of the fuel tank and through the fuel filter it sends the fuel to the fuel distributor. From there, one quantity of the fuel goes to the injectors that atomize it in the cylinders, while the rest flows to the fuel pressure regulator and via its return line it flows back to the fuel tank again. If someone was wondering why the letter K in the KE Jetronic name, it's from German Kontinuierlich, meaning continuous, no stopping. 
As long as uh, the engine is operating, the fuel flows from the fuel pump through the fuel filter into the fuel distributor, while the rest of it flows in the fuel pressure regulator and via its return line it flows to the fuel tank again. Here we see that five components must be in a shape as better as possible. The fuel pump, the fuel distributor, the injectors, the fuel pressure regulator, as well as uh, the airflow meter plate that mustn't be crooked in order in other words uh, the plate must not be touching its metal housing there is a mixture adjusting screw beside the, these five parts that is located uh, on the airflow meter that's the mechanical part of the system remember in order to adjust the mixture, you need a duty cycle, a duty cycle cap capable multimeter because this adjustment is extremely precise. In Mercedes, they put a little cork as a protection. Now, the electronics. This system has an ECU and the seven components with the help of which it gathers information about the ideal air to fuel ratio. These components are the coolant temperature sensor, the potentiometer, the oxygen sensor or the O2 sensor, the ideal control valve, the throttle position sensor, the cut-off disc cell switch and the EHA valve. As the ECU gathers the information out of these seven sensors, it creates a, the ideal air-to-fuel ratio in any moment. Now, we are going to describe each of the components in more details. The whole system looks like this. I'm going to show how the whole system looks like, taking a six-cylinder engine as an example. The fuel pump is the heart of the system, and it has to be in a state as better as possible, and in order to be like such, don't drive your car on reserve and, and uh, under no circumstances run out of fuel. There is no air inside because it has no return valves, so there is no risk of explosion. The gas lubricates its uh, eccentric rollers, but because of the no gas operation, its rollers get heated because there is no gas to lubric lubricate and cool them. So. The fuel filter. Its word says everything. They say that the factory recommendation is Knecht Mahler because it uh, has the best propulsive power. For 230E models, take the one with the label KL19. The next thing is the fuel accumulator. This part has the task to harmonize the vibrations coming from the pump and when the engine is stalled, it accumulates the pressure in the system in order for the warm engine to be started up easier. The fuel distributor. This is the most complex part on the whole system. It consists of the lower and the upper chamber between which a rubber diaphragm lies as a gasket. The diaphragm is extremely important to remain non eruptured because then the fuel is going to leak in the upper chamber and the metering won't happen. 
the injectors. The injectors on this system are mechanical and they cannot be cleaned ultrasonic. As they fail, they have to be replaced. There is an injector cleaner with which you are going to feel the improvement, but concerning the fact that you will have to fill up the car twice, it's better to buy new ones. The fuel pressure regulator. It must hold the constant pressure in the system, which is 5.3 to, to 5.5 bar on a four-cylinder engines. At sudden throttle blimps, it must not fall significantly. 0.1 bar is tolerated. On a six-cylinder engines, the pressure is between 5.7 and 5.9 bar. If that rubber vent hose line is ruptured, and there is a gas leak, that means that its diaphragm is ruptured and the fuel pressure regulator must be replaced. The airflow meter. Its plate must not be crooked because then you will have a vacuum leak, so the ECU is going to make a mixture enrichment. The plate must have between 1 and 2 mm gap before it starts moving harder. That can be adjusted on the CO screw. The potentiometer. A very important part for a steady idling. As its ceramic coat wears off, the ECU doesn't receive the information about the air and it comes to erratic operations. The coolant temperature sensor. As you start the engine, the ECU enriches the mixture, the coolant gets hotter as well as the engine. This part has to report the ECU that no additional mixture enrichment is necessary as the engine warms up. The throttle position sensor. It's located at the throttle body, while on its other side a screw and a counter screw for the idle adjustment are located. An important part of the system that signalizes the ECU where the throttle is positioned. The idle control valve. It controls the idle RPM while the engine idles. The oxygen sensor. It has the task to measure the amount of oxygen in the exhaust gases and to report the ECU about the ideal air amount. This sensor starts operating as the engine achieves working temperature. The cutoff diesel switch. It, its task is to report the ECU that the engine is on idle as the throttle lever touches the micro switch on the sensor. The EHA valve. The most important part for the ECU concerning fuel. In the last moment, it fine tunes the amount of gas. If the RPMs start falling, the EHA enriches the mixture to make the e it easier for the engine. The same thing at uh, the sudden acceleration. It makes the mixture rich in order for a car to accelerate as fast as possible when overtaking or it makes it leaner when you drive downhill and let the engine brake. The EHA makes the mixture leaner to the limit with the lean mixture. As for the other components, there is an OVP, an over voltage protection relay. 
It's located parallel to the ECU. It has a gauze lid and a fuse. That's how you can recognize it. The name speaks for itself what its function is. If the ABS light turns on, it is most possible that the OVP failed and should be replaced. The cold start valve. One more of the components of the system. Its task is to make cold starts easier. It has its chamber in which the condensation is significantly diminished comparing to the other injectors so that the gas can flow atomized in the cylinders. The result is an easier cold start. In the second part I will be talking about how to check each of the parts if they are good working and for the nominal values of particular parts as well. If you liked this video, then please uh, like it, share it, comment it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. And till the, the next video, happy Mercedes. Bye.